Welcome everybody to the Monday, June 6th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. All the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is approving the minutes of May 31st. As usual, I thought they were excellent. You look great. Yep. So I uh, approve. I will. Uh, you making a motion? Yes. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, we have three warrants. I went through them. They're pretty straightforward. The payroll warrants a little bit bigger than usual just because there's some end of the school year stuff in it. Um, so there's three. So the first is an accounts payable warrant for $114,022.19. It's a payroll warrant for $129,031.07. And a payroll deduction warrant for $32,450.54. So I make a motion that we accept them. I, I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Well, none for me. <coughs> hmm, I don't think so. Uh, one tomorrow. Conservation. Well, we had a big meeting that we went to on Saturday. Well, there was that meeting. Yes, there was. Okay. That, that was a good meeting. Yes. And then we had meetings Tuesday and Thursday. So, uh, what would you say maybe 120 people were at town meeting? Uh, I'm sorry, I said 125. 125, yeah. With at least, and, and we're going to talk more about town meeting later. Yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, um, well, it's all town meeting related, right? So, oh, except for forest and trails. Yeah, we went to the forest and trails committee meeting. That was Tuesday, I think. Um, the Thursday, Thursday, Thursday evening, and then, um, we were at the school Friday. Bruce about getting oh, everything right. squared away. Um, so we had lots of free time. And, and, and Kristen, they did a great job. Um, it's not even Tuesday, but the details of which currently elude me. Um, so uh, public comments, Marilyn, Priscilla, is there anything you'd like to say before we get on to old business or new business on account of you being members of the public? I I came here to for the Mary Weekmore section of the um of the meeting. Um, but I will say thanks for a great town meeting. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming to it. <laughs> You're welcome. Are you going to stick around when we talk about town meeting? There was a um, th little review of it. Yeah, it's a traditional town meeting autopsy. I can. It's a traditional topic for. I mean, if you you know, if you're not going to be here, well, Mary's not here. Oh, so we could do yeah, that. Mary's first. not Mary's not here yet. So okay, good, good. I'd like to hear what you liked about it, so we make sure we do that again. All right. Well, well we have nothing on old business, so new business. Annual town meeting review, lessons learned, and uh, other thoughts and or suggestions as to how we can improve town meeting, what we liked about it and we want to keep doing it. I, I, I will say for, for folks watching, I know that the trip hazard was a problem and that will not happen again. <laughs> so the, the, the things that covered the cords, that was, it was a little too, they were actually, um, the trip hazard was a trip hazard. The, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. illegally, you know, that's what the insurance companies want them to use. But we've talked afterwards, and there's a way we can set it up where there won't be anything going across people's paths. So even duct tape would have been better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And I thought um, we got feedback, you know, we solicited feedback afterwards from residents. The warrant light was very favorably reviewed. It's several residents that said, please do it next year. It really helped. Um, awesome. And there were, at the end of the meeting, there were still nine people that had never been to a town meeting before. 
that came for the first time. And I know that there were several others that left that were there for the first time that left that when, when we did the break to stand up, um, which helped actually, that was a really good thing. I noticed the meeting picked up steam afterwards and you, you forget the cost of comfort that we all suffer with those metal chairs, not to beat the same dead horse again and again. I'm always about the cushion chairs. But, but when we talk but, about new things, that was definitely a new thing. That was a new thing. I don't recall doing that before. Yep. And it was well received. Yep. Yep. But I mean, it was almost like a, a meet and greet in church, you know, when everybody yeah. stands up and shakes hands all around. And yep. uh, that's so, what everyone seemed to be doing, was introducing themselves to the people sitting, you know, six feet away from them, but near them. Yep. And, it, and I thought that was great. There was a couple dozen people that maybe that left that took, took a chance to leave right then, though. No, but, uh, um, but the other thing, I mean, you Phil, you mentioned with, you know, normally we hand out, if people remember to bring it after we mail it to them, the warrant. And, and you know, uh, and we might hand out extra copies of the warrant if we have any, but people sit there struggling through the huge warrant trying yeah. to figure out where we are. Yeah. We handed out three versions of the warrant this time. Right. You know, we handed out the the uh, the motions that we were going to read yeah. i've never done that before right. so with the motions that to be read and i think that worked really well yeah, I, I heard and, that, and that was what i saw everyone following not the warrant itself people weren't struggling with a 12 page warrant they just had the one page with the motions that was good and then we handed out the, the warrant light which i think caused a lot less questions you know, the questions people would ask a little bit of explanation. The explanation was right there and they had read it and they said, oh, I understand that now. And, and I thought that worked and made the meeting go quicker. Two and a half hours. The, wow. um, yeah, which was right, right before we started, Jim, Jim Record turned me and he said, this is going to last till 3.30. He was excited. Right. right at 3.30. Yeah. It was yeah. pretty... And the, yeah, the other thing that um, that worked well was um, just the, the the financial stuff that we handed out too. Those pie, pie charts and bar graphs, and just solid numbers um, on a, in a, on a whole bunch of different issues that were going to come up, and that was very well received. And I, I heard gratitude for the transparency in general. That it just seemed to people that they had more information than had ever been provided before. And there was a greater insight into what we were doing and how we were doing it. And, um, and people were, people said that, uh, that, that it went through. People thought it was, it, it passed fast. So we could talk about the clickers, but they weren't new. We did the clickers last year and they worked well. And this year we didn't have the issue of struggling over how to do Call the question or tabling. We just we, we did it with short raises of hands, and they were all. We didn't have to do any counts, so that was good. And the the other thing, um, we didn't get a single unanimous vote on anything. So it was always <laughs> at that. When the, and I thought the art, the article to the article that where we we're changing the word council, C I ending C I L with to the word council and the S E L in our That's in our bylaws. <laughs> I thought, all right, now how can anybody really be against that? Well, somebody was. I don't know. So it was great. Um, I, I, I did think that what something we could have done at the very beginning when we tested the flippers would have been to have had Jimmy ask everybody to hit yes. And then made sure we got 125 or however many clickers, you know, yeses, and then had everybody click no. And you know, I mean, maybe maybe somebody's yes was being registered as a no. You know, we 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 know that people clicked on the button and they could see if their clicker was working, but I don't know that they really were working. Yeah, I it. asked the the, the the clerk, um, the town clerk. There's a whole process that she goes through to verify that they're all working. And, and then one of them all. wasn't. Yeah, Howard Boyd was it? Some, right. some, somebody has to. Chief was it? Would Chief Lamette had to turn there, get a get a second one because he said his wasn't working. 
That's a good idea. Yeah. No. The other the other lesson too was just to be eat when I don't think my we, we the uh, the um the question that didn't there was questions about stuff that was not on the warrant, like about what was our money on. And that was sort of we weren't really super prepared for that, even though we had all that information, mm -hmm. but it wasn't right at fingertips. Okay. And um and at the same time, like you know, when I gave an answer to that, it wasn't precise because I talked about how the, the effect of what we spent the money on was to lower the taxes, lower the, the assessment dollar for dollar. But that required, you know, and then that created the false impression that we used it just to lower assessments. And and so the, the that required you to come in and say we, we can't use it just to lower the assessment. So I think that there was a bit of confusion there, and that was well, that it, a regrettable that it's not good choice. For one time, I mean, for a general fund expense, something that would be recurring. That's what it's not. Good yeah, for. yeah. And what we used it for wasn't recurring. You know, right. this is a one-time thing. Right. But I thought that was such an arcane bit of like what we exactly spent that on would have taken me five minutes to explain. But yeah. I could have found it on the computer, but by the time I got it, everybody would have been bored. <laughs> so exactly, exactly. Um, but that was that was the only question that we were unprepared for, probably. And other than that, there were several questions that I thought did not need to be asked that could have been asked of us at any time in the months before by people that are very close by, <laughs> but did not take the opportunity to do that. There always is a bit of grandstanding on everyone's part. Yeah. It won us number of our stuff too. You know, I mean, you know, but. Um, that's, that's what town meeting is. The, the child care was very well received. People, people were very grateful about that. They said they would not have been able to come. Um, but pretty much everybody was critical of the 1 p.m. start. Everybody was just saying, please do this earlier. So earlier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah people wanted it nine. All the, all the school people wanted it nine in the morning, but a, a lot of residents at 10. But that way, that way you still have half a day, or you still have your day. You can get out of there 1231 or whatever, and you still this just took this everybody was right. This takes the entire day. I would get a one minute like you go to the dump tomorrow. That was good too. But other than that, this resident here. likes it at one o'clock. Ah. <laughs> there you go. So wait. Yeah. yeah. I know. Would That's you come at nine if we had it at nine? Um, you know, probably it would just be it. it, it probably, but I like it. One o'clock works better for my life personally. So just you know, just to make sure nothing's totally unanimous, I'm gonna chime in for one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got a no picker yes, here. You. Would no be would would uh, ten o'clock be better? No. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Any other thoughts about town meeting? Um, very grateful that we yeah. had to do it. <laughs> The song, you know, it, it, it was also noted that we tried that, that it seemed like there was a greater effort to get people to come than had ever been done before. And I think that that's an accurate characterization. Yes. Yes. And, um, and the work that, you know, should just be noted, Sad and Nelson and Erica, that little working group. Um, did, thank you. Thank you. It, you know, it was successful. We had new people come and, um, and it, they were, the one, the one, the one couple that came up and they were just so blown away. They're like, "This is," what they, they started talking about. They get misty eyed about democracy and da, da da da. It was just neat to see. Yeah, it was just neat to see. I thought the sign boards were great. Yeah, you know, right in the middle of town, and uh, yeah. you know, we could use a few more of them, but we have two. So I see. Um, are you okay with that? Anything else? Um, no, I've got nothing else. All right, so I see Mary is now on the line. And uh, so we have Mary Widmore. Give us an update on the card and credit. Hi, Mary. Hi, guys, how are you? Um, 
Okay, so I did all the research. I, I'm making a report and it's being worked on now, the math part, but I'll have it to you by the 20th. And what we did is we sent a letter, two letters, made numerous calls, visited a few people and recorded who was interested in joining an aggregate or more importantly, interested in using their forest as a nature-based climate solution. That was kind of the heart of it. What was their motivation? So it came up with 4,488 acres, which is large enough to have a program. That's 34.8% of your people that own forests in town would be interested in selling carbon credits. That's pretty good. So, Amazing. yeah, Amazing. I was surprised. I made a map. I'm trying to share it, but because when you see that amount of acre in your, there's 13,000 total forested acres in your town. So that when you see it visually, you get it. But that is amazing. So I reached out to markets. Things have wanna changed. Share, wanna share your map? I have the I think have so. The I'll have, I don't know how to make it larger and get rid of like the extraneous bars and tabs, but we could look at it anyways. How's that? Right. You have to let me, right? Okay. Let you, let, you let You've me. been let. I've been let. I've been allowed. There. Yeah, see, it's missing something with the edges, but all the red are the parcels. That's a lot of land. Oh. Yeah, that's a big... That's a project. You could do a project. And things have changed. I did contact three developers, uh, investigated other markets. The, the market has changed in the last year. So now there is a lot of, they're calling themselves private developers. And they're going individually to private owners and buying their carbon on a year or 10 year basis. It's kind of evolved over the last nine months. It, they're paying out kind of well. So I think that's an option I'll put in the report. I'll show you what they're pricing, how it e easy it is to join them. Plus the, what I found out from the developers, the developers who could get you more money because these private developers are doing a lot of work for you. So they want to get paid too. So, but to go to a developer, they said, what you have to do, and this big project in Vermont did it. Um, Cold Hollow to Canada was the name of the project, but they had 7,000 acres and they created like a real estate trust or they, they created this entity that could get the many landowners together to do business with the carbon buyers. So instead of having, there are 39 private with an owner's interested. So instead of having 39 business contracts, they want one with everybody kind of making an understanding with each other, which I think could work. So you do have a project there. Another thing to think about is the state of Massachusetts right now is creating like their own carbon market. They're going to, yeah, they're going to that for 20 years. No, no. Bob Wilbur is Bob O'Connor now. He got the big job down in Boston at EEA. And they're going to tie it to the transportation sector. So another thing is form your own aggregate and see if that develops because then you have a buyer and you already have the organization. You already know everybody involved. You have their addresses and emails and contact info. I'll give you all that. I collect it on your behalf. But you'd have a buyer too. So there's three ways in. And you got to decide, do you push to do your own thing and try to make good or do you uh, herd them and enable owners to enter those private developer markets in which they are, if your goal is to sequester, store, um, let the trees get bigger. That's happening. Just people are doing it independently, not in the mass or aggregate at, as we had hoped it would be. But this will go in your report. You can read it and then you can decide what to do about it. It was, I think it was successful. That's a lot of land. We, I was surprised. Yeah. Jerry, for private buyers, how yeah. small property can you, could join that? They are, there's one company, Finite Carbon, but they got a catchy name for their private owner business. I think it's like, core carbon or eco carbs, eco core, something. But they will buy down to six acres. 
So they'll come in, if you got a lot of big trees, you might have a lot of metric tons. So, and core carbon makes you do a 10 year deal and they pay you every year so much. So there's one that's a one year deal, but they don't pay a lot, but you're getting paid every year. So, but no, I made, I made charts. I have all this information. You could sit down and decide how to move into the carbon market because you'll have all the information in front of you. But I, I want to finish the report, give it to you, and then slowly go through it with you and help you in any way I can. I was surprised that that amount of people, and that's a good that's a good turnout. So Great. questions. Does that include South Deerfield Water District? Yes. Right. And because they well, are they can participate because they are quasi government. They're like a real. They're still a water supply company, like old school, where they sell the water to the city so they can get in which is good because yeah. and that's only their land in conway and they have another 400 acres that they can put in the weightly the weightly piece so they're a big they're a big add to the project yeah and did city of northampton ever contact you in any way about well i called the, i called the person and they're working on investigating their own because they have themselves the 3300 or they have a lot of land so yeah. they want to want they want to do their own thing yeah right. um, and then you know i guess just you know the original vision for this you know what 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 was that we wanted the, the whole public private together and that 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 was that was what nobody else is doing and i think that that we're uniquely situated for that just because we're a fairly tight knit town and that we do it for the town forest and for the, for, for, and we take the residents along with us. Yeah. And um, you, you do have enough land and you would have enough credits to do it that way. You have to think it out how you want to do it. I support that idea. I'm excited that I think Mass will pull it together this time with that carbon thing. So you'd have a buyer, but I also think the story of your project and how each little owner has their own way to care for their woods and the private and public. I think you're right. It, you will have a good story to sell it. A small community wanting to do their bit. I mean, yes. Did, so, did, did, but did, that did, is, I felt I had to investigate all possibilities to make it work. So that's why I present three possibilities. And you are going with the aggregate because you do have enough people. Well, you have enough land and you have enough stocking. And what is your question? And then there was also the whole aspect of with Hank Art and the collaborative, the, the collegiate collaborative that needs to buy carbon credit hours. And he wanted a heads up and a chance to bid on when, when there is something to ready to be bid on. He wanted the heads up to. Yeah, to bid. Uh, yeah, to bid because, um, you know, that that there's, to, to me, there's sort of a, that that's more, I don't know. It's uh, you like it, it as a way to sell them. You like that. You like where yeah, it goes because it stays. It stays local. It's local yeah. to local, and it just it seemed like the most honorable, what possible way to, to go about doing it that is currently in existence that I know of. It's a, but because um, it's it's strictly well, not. Well, it's all non you know it's instead of having these private companies that have a profit motive and ultimately answer to shareholders um and that sort of thing so yeah it's more yeah it's more free can you send me his email or phone number i would love to talk to him about it yeah we just planted trees together on saturday in where saturday. where did you plant trees South River Meadow, there was. Oh, you uh, were on the party, yeah. And there was a DCR, whatever, whoever all those people were. I dug holes, dug holes in. Good. What kind of trees did you plant? Um, uh, there was a lot of blueberry and uh, just a lot of, uh, a lot of weird trees. <laughs> um, like special for habitat or something? Special for habitat and special local trees that are just going to apparently be really good for all the flora and fauna, but not so good for curb appeal. 
you know, bright color sort of thing, but um, but that's that's not the curb appeal is definitely not part of the criteria for selecting plants. Yeah. Um, which is fine, but but Janet must have a list that we could yes, send choke berry. a lot of chokeberry. I remember a lot oh chokeberry is good. Birds love that. If if that's... if fruits prolifically. Our outdoor committee could send you the list. <laughs> That's okay. I don't want to make anyone do work, but that's what's going on there. And I do have that paper. Is that who I bill? I don't know how to do this business. And now it'll be closing. So do I call the guy whose number's on the contract? What do you guys think? What do you know about this? That guy is now the guy instead of this. When he signed that contract, he was uh, not quite the guy yet. Now he's the guy. He's the and guy in the state. Really, li He's the guy. really likes this project, and he was open to funding the next step with, an, oh, with cool. another another twenty thousand well, dollars. I will I will give you recommendations for the next step, and you can talk about it. Should we meet again? Like I'll have it to you by the twentieth. We can meet after that. I want you to really read it and think about it. So let me know. Our next meeting is the twenty first. That's the last meeting. I think. So if it has to be submitted by the 30th that's kind of that's it yeah yeah the 21st okay mary yeah i yeah i'll give it to you before that hopefully at least a week before that no the 21st yeah the 21st i thought you said you were going to give it to us on the 20th sorry <laughs> that's the day before that yeah okay i would give it to you before that and on the revision of those management plans i'm working on them I could have them done by the end of the month, but I might slow down the process and work with your forest and trails committee if they're willing to. Because at the meeting the other week, last week, I realized, oh, they're so true. We didn't really deal with that. And I've gotten kind of go ahead from Mass Audubon that it's okay that could they could come in like the very end of the month or next month. So that's what's happening there, but I'll fulfill that one. And any other question? Is that... That's when we're celebrating Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Monday, yeah. the Monday, the Monday, the 20th, town offices are closed. That is the official Juneteenth federal holiday is being observed that day. Ah. In federal Mary, office. I have a question. Yeah. Hi, Marilyn. You went away. Hi, Mary. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Did I come back? Yeah. Yes, you're back. Um, you're back. So I, it's my understanding that the Fournier property and the town farm forest are part of the, are included in this, correct? Um, the, the, the grant to revise your current- In the carbon current, trust plan. Yes, that is correct. Um, and so I don't know if it's too soon in the process to ask this question, but if this then moves forward, does that commit us to doing certain things in the stewardship plan? No. There, that you are, the way, wrote and are revising? The way your plan is written is before anything would be done, it would be reviewed again and approved by your community. So there are suggestions in the plan. And Let's face it, if you just let the trees grow and do nothing, that's a win in the carbon world. So because the plan was written that that gave that um, forward thinking that things would change in the forest and in the community. So no, I'll keep the language as it is in the original that is very um, non committal, like non mandatory. So your the answer, the short answer would be no. Okay, because it's also my understanding that with this, you have to like prove additionality. And so I didn't know if that then, I wasn't sure how that then played in, plays in. Uh, do you know, so your idea of additionality is that you grow more with the project than without it, right? That's your idea of it? I, I just, I don't know, honestly, enough about that. So that's why I'm asking. Okay. Um, 
do you it um if you were in the if you enter the carbon market you would have to say to the vendor that you planned or intended to take care of the woods in a certain way through a certain period of time um if you if they were going to buy your credits they would create this mathematical model it's not really tied to much in the real world except that if you could sell timber now and make x but you decide not to and enter this program play play in the carbon market you're forgoing a set amount of income and uh, if you decide to not do and you have to be able to say like in your management plan that it did recommend a harvest that there was the possibility of a harvest that you are deferring a decision in order to grow more carbon than you would if you did it and it's a weird additionality is like i don't know proving a double negative or something because you're proving you're hedging your bets on what you'll make out there on the volume of credits that did grow but might not have grown if you had done a harvest <laughs> so that's what additionality is and by not doing anything if in fact you had considered it or it is a merchantable possibility due to the stocking and condition of your land that can leverage additionality so if you are thinking that additionality is somehow tied to a mandatory commitment to implement practices no does that answer your question i'm trying to figure that out <laughs> I, I think it answers it enough. Uh, well, I, I got enough for now. So yeah. wait, let me ask this. So okay. with with the carbon trust, are they more focused on the storage or the sequestering of carbon or uh, both? They're focused on both, but there's a there's a um, characteristic. Most of the 44 88 acres that are interested, they're second growth for us. So what is your oldest tree? 80, maybe some relics from before pasturing. But these are trees that are in that like 30 to 75, 80 age class where they are growing as fast as they would ever grow. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, you couldn't, you couldn't not grow carbon through whatever period you committed to because of the age and just the condition of your forest. I mean, every forest is unique and special and all that, but then there's like a type, there's a, a large right. landscape of forest type character, whatever, stand. And in that, most of this acreage lies. So it's grown pretty, it's moving. It is storing and they are already big. Many of them are under 18, but up to 18. So a lot of storage. You've got a really, the, the project would have a really nice balance. As Phil said, it would be an easy sale, but that isn't what you asked. <laughs> I hope I answered what you asked though. Query is the additionality, the amount that the forest grows from one year to the next? No. Well, if you look at your forest, and if it was that, I'm going to draw a little curve and I'll, I'll, I'll hold it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if this is your forest growth, the orange, and you might have a harvest, so it drops, then it climbs, then it drops, so it climbs. And this is what's happening because you're even harvesting. It's going up and down. But then you say, I'm going under this program. I am in the carbon. I like that word carbon trust. Um, I'm going to manage my forest in a different way. So I'm still going to do some harvest, some really light harvest, like recommended in your plan, but I'm going to space them out and I'm just going to grow my wood. So it would kind of look like this. I'm color coding. I'm, I'm so delighted to do this. Because <laughs> you can't, they don't buy what's there. They don't, they understand what's stored, but that's not going to solve the problem of CO2 being spewed into the atmosphere every day, all day by us. So what they buy is what you get extra than what your force would have done. So if you look at this, I don't know if you can see it, but the orange, the bottom curve, your trees are growing along and you have a harvest so it drops, then they pick it up because they grow and the sun's out, harvest it drops. 
this is your usual business, like what you could do in the climate in Massachusetts, given the industry, the volume with that moves in a week, the pricing at the market. But you're going to say, nah, not interested. We're going to do this. We're going to join the carbon program and we're going to grow and grow and grow. Maybe take a little hit in firewood, lower strata trees, nothing big. Then we're going to let it grow 10, 20 years. So growth is growing. Another little harvest, conserve harvest, and it keeps growing. All they'll pay you for is this. I don't know if, if you had calculus or remember it. The area between these two curves. This is the forest productive capacity to store and pull in CO2. And if you did what you could do legally in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, this is what you decide to do in the carbon trust. And you're going to cut lightly and tread and let them grow and just fatten up. So this is how much more carbon you grew in the window that you committed for them to have the rights to your credits. That's additionality. That's what you're selling. Does that make sense? With the hundred acres that they didn't plan on cutting would have to imply that they could cut it. Legally. That they, legally that you had the stocking. And again, there's a type of woods in Massachusetts, second growth, full of stuff loaded with stocking, fast growing, you would be fine. You would be, you could totally legally conduct a commercial timber harvest and either of those properties. And if we're going down that path, you would actually make quite a bit of money, but that isn't, we don't even have it in the plan, but you would pass that criterion in the process of them calculating your additionality and generating. Then they turn this volume of that curve into metric tons of carbon, because this is the stuff being stored on the trees that would not have been stored on the trees because you would have caught and managed in the orange curve. So that's your volume for sale and it's the definition of additionality. Yeah. But Yes, you don't have to do it, Marilyn. That's where we started. <laughs> if you did, if the townland was in such a program, you would not have to cut trees to stay in the set program. And if you figure trees, the process, these programs are for 40 years. So you cut trees just um, 15, 16 years ago. So 40 years, it, like you could cut now, but yeah they'll get it you will be fine you would be totally accepted and to be able to keep your management plan as it is in an optional capacity like do it if everyone agrees if it's going to work for everyone's values so yeah because i don't know i just having done it that project at tri city i think it's a cool thing managed well it keeps you money to do other stuff to get a culvert or to <laughs> I know, or to put some oh. fill, or to put some fill on the road. I didn't bring the culvert up for that reason. It was an example, poor one. So that's what's well, happening. So yeah. I just want to get just just for for the members of our Forest and Trails Committee that are on here, and just for everybody else watching, a little bit of context and a little bit of history about where we are right now, where we were, etc. So the, we're we're here right now discuss. We're wrapping up the end of an MVP grant of of a from the um, non-MVP grant, Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership grant. It was an MVP grant. It was an MVP grant, yeah. And, and this was from two years ago. I actually wrote this grant application. And um, and this this was approved by the select board three years ago when John O'Rourke was chair. Yeah. It was approved again when you were chair. And which was both of which were prior to the creation of the Forest and Trails Committee. Um, Prior, prior to the to, to when we even received the the um, the forest stewardship plan, and uh, the the whole idea from the very beginning was to try to do this <clears throat> with public and private, and also it was in light of the history that our town specifically has had with our town forest and logging and with logging amongst private landowners and town forest. I remember the first one of my first town meetings right when we moved here was when the town had agreed to commercially log. Fournier and Cricket Hill Forest. And the town, I remember, was promised a town meeting, $150,000. And, um, but that did not include the, all the costs for the roads that they had to build, the, the landings, the culverts, et cetera. And I think what the town ended up grossing was not even 50,000. Much less, yeah. Yeah, yeah, much, much less than that. And 
And it was just, the, the results were a mess. It was despised by like unanimously, but we are, but I, I've always remembered that, you know, we're just one, maybe two select board elections away from logging our forests again. And, um, and all it takes is one vote at town meeting, one person to stand up and say, hey, lower our assessments, let's cut some of those trees. And, you know, that can happen. And so I, I actually think our town forest, no matter what, how, how, no matter what good works our forest and trails committee can put into them, is always at serious risk. Um, that that is not appreciated to, 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 to be logged. And one of the things that I really like about this, the carbon credit thing, is that contractually you're obligating this forest for 20 years of no commercial cutting. And so. Yeah. And, and so to me, I feel like that's the kind of legacy that, um, you know, that I'm interested in creating, just like that, that sort of, that's what, that is the best way that I know of that we can really preserve those two town forests. Um, and, and, you know, and, and that way I don't have to stay on the select board for 20 years to do it. So, um, yeah. And, but also Mary, the process we went through with you to write the stewardship plan Created a cadre of dedicated people interested. Yeah, who care, who want to take well, over. That's right. And and then the, the walk you took us through uh, on the Fournier property and the walk you're going to take us through in a week or two. That is the 18th. Build build on that that caring. I think so. I I totally failed. If your whole agenda was to lock it up for blocking from the start, but I'm really honored to have walked you through this process and presented the very mechanism to do so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were you. I never suspected that of you, Phil, but but that is good. <laughs> but but hopefully, but that's where a big part of my money came from through 40 years with solid wood. But the the market accommodates you and if you can really create what i heard from the developers the big guys who want you to pick one guy which you're going to do anyways or a woman to run it is to make it the best story you can like to have videos of really nice woodlots interview the people like make it a marketing skill and then the buyers will come themselves and to talk around like i know the guy in boston bill van dorn who is working on this for what the state's going to launch so they they have connections so do it like any other business deal that you would put due diligence into yeah that's i mean that's part of it that, that, you, that, you're... The, the part of it is that there actually is re revenue possible you know that that this will end up with revenue yes. to the planners and that um that that is not in and of itself an evil thing and oh, that, it, it is that, let me that, calculate that, what it you know, might be if we and, based... and, and that the other you know that there are there are just guys in pickup trucks driving around with checkbooks pulling in the, the owners of woodlots driveway and just writing a check and say just let me let me bring my equipment back once this check clears oh and, for the to cut timber you mean yeah. and mm -hmm. i mean they're they're going into you know conway landowners with a check for two hundred thousand dollars just here, just let me add it. And, uh, you know, people that never thought of cutting their forest, guess what? They end up cutting their forest when presented with something like that. And, um, you know, so, so to me, I think everybody involved in this can very honestly answer that, yes, they can, they can because this is the reality that we are in now. Lumber is so high that, um, that, that it's people with, you know, New Hampshire and New York and Vermont license plates driving around with checkbooks, pulling into people's driveways, saying, let me add it. And, um, it, you know, that's, that's what's happening right now. So the, the market is hot. I will give you, that is true. Timber selling, although they're saying timber is going to take a slow down a bit, but it'll come back. It's a cyclic. And this is this is, you know, this is this is a way to, to let private landowners have you know be able to monetize their woodlot and not cut all the trees down. So we, but they could cut some in the spirit of increasing the productivity and vigor right. of said remaining 
if we're just going to treat them as carbon storage units and vacuums, then you want to work in optimal. So you do improvement hybrids, small material. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. But leave the big trees to just get old. And it could be also like an experiment. If they look like this now, what will they look like at 150, 120? I, I support you all wholeheartedly. I hope that you decide to let me further participate in said conservation movement for your town. You know, I, I, I think that's where the town's at, like, yeah, 99% wise. Just yeah. from, and, um, but if some future select board wanted to do something different, yeah. it's done. They, well, <laughs> there would be a lot of people here arguing against it. But you can't get out of your commitment to a market. You made a pledge that you'd pull this much CO2 out of the atmosphere, and you have to honor it. It's the check already, you know? Yeah. And you, yeah, and you make money in the process. It's a great idea. And harvesting would still go on throughout the program. There would still be a working capacity to the project because private owners would make different decisions. So you're presenting a unique and valid point of view into the whole project of this you can do too. I like it. It's, it's a good story. You could find buyers with that. That's your story. You could go to someone who's in charge of their sustainability project down that um, Amazon mega garage, really, and that you'd have a good story to sell. Yeah, I, I'm I supportive of it. Thank you, Mary. I love a good story myself. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That's what they're saying. It's charismatic credits that are bringing in good money right now. So. <laughs> That's us. That's it. Conway so... charismatic. Well, it's and a I even like... I even like the um, the people who have a preservationist view and want to forever wild coming together with people who want to harvest timber and having like this even um, bipartisan view of forest management in one program. That that's another part of the story. And that's a true that's a true part of it too. That yeah. is. It's like overcoming conflict. Really good story in today's climate, in today's world. It's awful out there. This is, I, I get you, you did it, and you're still on the board. And I think that you will find everybody would support it. There wouldn't be someone that would say, no, that's not bad. Because in the locking up your land and joining that program, you're also giving the other people with the plans the right to vote. So you're even looking like holding both sides of the opinion. <laughs> Very well done, Phil. You are a politician. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, 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 he's wounded. Oh. No, no, that's what people, that's what politicians do, right? You govern us, you figure out clever ideas and manage them through society. That's, that's a politician. That's a good thing. It's a compliment. Any other questions? Thank you, Mary. Bless you. Thank you. That's what I've done with your money. It's been a lot of fun. And the report has charts. I like questioned why didn't you want to be in or why you did want to be in, what would make you want to be in. Like I took a lot of information because I had them on the phone. That was hard. It was, and I figured I tried two calls and if they, they didn't want to deal with me. So, but I was, I was um, kind through it, kind and respectful, not um, a pain in the butt, like surveyors could be, so. Uh, yeah. people, people responded to you people liked to you. good yeah they did they came out your town is a progressive a forward-thinking town because a lot of the work like with town forest it would be resilient building so you're pulling the wood at the carbon out but you're also getting the forest in this optimal shape which is really good and you already did that so like i said 16 years ago I don't know. When I first started my, my career, you did harvest every 20 to 25 years. Somehow it got shortened in my later career, but a choice of 40 years, or if someone else picks up the mantle, or it might just become like how in towns things become habituated and they won't cut anyway. So no matter who's in the select board position. Yeah, well done. Thanks. 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 You too. You too. That 4,000 plus is a good number. That's it's a wicked good. It's 34.8%. That's like over a third, just a nudge, a nudge, but over a third. I was proud of that. Yeah. 
and um, do we need do and do we need one single integrated forest management plan for all the properties participating? No. Oh, that'd be. Oh no, no, no. You could do it in another way. Yeah, I haven't thought that piece out. I better since I'm writing the end of it. But um, but it will work. That's enough acres to have it work. Definitely. All right. Well. I'll stick around and see what else you're up to because you're interesting okay. people. So, <laughs> but do you have any more questions? Because you do have me. And I threw a lot of stuff at you, like a lot of work over a lot of time. I hope we get beautiful weather 12 days from now. Are we you coming? Have... Are you coming to the forest? I'm hoping to, yeah. How oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the, I think the town farm is a forest that people in town don't know as well. As the 40 year problem. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's a magnificent forest. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you see what I mean by those optimal growers? It's just loaded with hardwood that's in that size. And hardwood's denser than pine, so it's richer in carbon and they're growing very fast. I'm going to yeah. leave unless you have questions. Um, no, I look forward to reading the report though and talking on the 21st, if not the 4th, but I think. I, I, I know we would love to pursue the next step and oh, cool. keep going because there's momentum behind this and it's the right, to me, it's really the right thing to do. It's not a close call. It's, it's not a close call. Well, in the research that I did for doing it, what really everyone I talked to said is we pushed it long enough. It's a good thing to be doing just to show our society that it's time to stop. So you're right. All right, good night, everybody. I'm leaving there. Good night, Mary. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, always nice. Thank you. Um, anything else about the carbon credit? And Priscilla, Marilyn, do you get any, any last thoughts before we move on to the next topic? You don't have to. There's no requirement that you have last thoughts. It's OK. Um, if not, then items not anticipated 48 hours. Mm. Town administrator update, yes. Town meeting, blah, blah, blah. Select. That was it, right? That's your update? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Town meeting went great. It, it did. All your preparation, thank you. Just, you need to really be acknowledged for the <laughs> amount of prep work that you specifically did. And, um, you know, that was. Everything passed. Everything passed, which is rare. Which is rare. You know, they didn't. Usually, there's always one or two sacrificial lambs, and um, so. But everything passed, and that was in large part to the excellent preparation done. So thank you. Select board member comments or concerns. Yep. I just I just made a select board comment. That was a comment. Um, Mail. Uh, we had a letter from a Deerfield resident, the Stillwater, that the complaints about the Deerfield River Portage Company. I think that's the same resident that writes that letter every year. So apparently that was inaccurate. Yes, there was many so, inaccuracies in that letter. Um, that, that, but, that our local rafting company does not get off. It. So, no, they don't. Um, but it's, you know, it's also aiming your fire at the wrong place because your fire should be aimed at the town of Charlemont and their actions. You know, we as state taxpayers funded the building of two large parking areas, the acquisition of the land and the two building of large parking areas for visitors to use that water in the town, within the town limits of Charlemont. And, um, they, have, they decide to close off access to those parking lots. And, you know, it's because they don't want the people from out of town. And I, you know, th this is a sore thing with me because I've been in meetings with public officials and the, that we don't want people from out of town. That is modern 2020, 2022 code for we don't want people with brown skin. We don't want people that speak Spanish. We don't want people that aren't like us. And 
um, there, and I've heard like outright racist comments from numerous people about this stuff. And, um, you know, I feel really strongly that there, that there should be within our culture, within our, that there should be stuff that you can do with your kids that doesn't cost any money, that's fun. You know, and going to the river is like one of the last things that, that you can do. And, and to, to like close those parking areas off and it's like a balloon that squeezed and you know, all of those people, they, they can't go there, they go wherever they can because um, you know, a lot of them are working folks and they don't have, you know, the, the letter writer was correct. A lot of them went on the, 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 the tube thing once and said, and saw that you can park that, you know, and, and said, I'll do this myself from now on. And, um, <clears throat> you know, but I think that's a good thing. And, and I understand that when there's a lot of people using something, there's litter, there's whatever. And, um, you know, but, but the, a lot of the people that are that complain are also the people that live right on the river and are used to like this sense. But we have to crack down on the park. We do, yeah. we do, there, you, there is, it can get out of control. Yeah. It can get out of control, but closing down purpose built purpose built parking areas to frustrate working people that just want to do stuff with their kids is um, is just wrong. And for many people that do that, the the motives are it's racism. And I've heard people say it, and I don't like it. And um, you know, I've heard people say it in this town. Say but the rafting but is still going on. The, the rafting the, is still going professional on. Professional rafting. And, yeah. and they 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 hire I, I, there's four Conway high school kids that have summer jobs because of them. And there's two Conway people that have full-time jobs because of them. And I'm okay with them here. You know, I'm okay with them here. Right. There's we don't have anything like that. And I, I know I've seen I, you know, I've seen them get out. The drivers always get out with trash bags. They, they, they walk around their vehicle and they pick up trash. And it's not all the trash. There's not as much trash as there, you know, there wouldn't be as much trash if you banned access to everybody, that's true. Um, but at what cost is that really? So that's my soapbox about that. Um, and, uh, the other letter that we got was about the Poland Bridge replacement. That was a whole, basically if they, they submitted their plans, if the select board doesn't like their plans, we're supposed to let them know in 30 days. It looks like a bridge plan to me. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, yes. The Conservation Commission also received that letter just so that they would also know this is happening. Quite a few departments actually received that. So great. Is good. Yeah. So this is the winter roads. Why don't you tell us what the map is? <laughs> okay. You know, re right. Read a three page single spaced <laughs> letter in 10 seconds and tell the world what it means. Right. This was just a, a, a contract that came in. It's the Winter Recovery Assistance Program or RAP funding. And Conway is. But well, all the towns are getting some money if they have a certain amount of dirt roads. And so I think our number is 213 something thousand. Um, so this came in and what, what I heard, which I hope is correct, was that the sooner we got it signed and back into the state, the quicker we're gonna get the funds so that um, Ron can start. <laughs> so, well, it, actually they named me on the contract. So I went ahead and Great. signed it and sent it in. I just Great. wanna let people know that Hopefully we'll be getting two hundred fifteen thousand dollars soon for Ron to another couple of miles of road. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I guess you know the the Poland Brook Bridge. I guess if any interested resident is interested in what the project is going to look like, to please come into the town office and ask to see the plans that have been submitted, um, because they will be in Veronique's possession and ready for your review. <laughs> And you have 30 days to make objections to mass stock high resolution. So, and the uh, announcement Conway Town Farm Forest Walk, June 18th, 9 30, 12 noon. And 
If you want to go, call Mary Wigmore at 413-628-4594 to register. And this is on our town website. Yes. Okay, so it, it has a link you can click on to register online. Good. And our next meeting is Tuesday, June 21st, 2022 at 6 p.m. here. And after that, so we will be adjourning the public portion of this. No, we're going to be doing the executive session in the open. Is that, no. Okay. We're, we're adjourning the public portion. We're doing an executive session briefly, and then we'll be coming back in the open session to announce. Um, yes, you do. We're coming back into open session to announce the um, acceptance and publication of executive session minutes that's going in public because that's what we do in executive session each week vote to make them public and then we can come back out and announce it that it's public but you can, so yeah we vote to approve and then vote whether or not to disclose yes, yes. so um so motion to adjourn this and then to head into executive session for it's the same thing, reason number six, to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a motion for adjournment and then we'll have a step, then we'll go, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop the recording and we'll, but we will be going into executive session for the, for the reason I just mentioned. Right. To We're going to stop the recording. I'm going to actually close out the Zoom and then we'll restart at the same link. Okay. Because it's always, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's that so, works. That I, don't works. Know the other, I don't know any other way to do it. Okay. We've never gone back in right. to right. session after we, we, we couldn't make that agreement. I, I don't. Okay. We, we, I, I, I don't. Okay. No, yeah, you have to come back out in public. Though. Okay. So, um, the, yeah. So it's just a motion to adjourn now. So I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. <laughs> declare, declare the select board meeting of Monday, June 6th, 2022, back in session. And um, and I suppose as, as the chair, we can I just can announce that we have approved and published and or disclosed executive session minutes from August 30th, 2021, September 27, 2021, December 6, 2021, December 13th, 2021, December 20th, 2021, January 10th, 2022, February 17th, 2022, March 7th, 2022, and April 19th, 2022. That was a lot of rustling of paper. <coughs> Rustlers. And that's an announcement, no that, vote. That, that, yeah, there is no week, we, those votes are done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's nothing left to vote on and ready to for another motion to adjourn the open meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank Aye. You.